up next. Um, j'ai le plaisir de participer dans une conversation avec Now le it's uh, my Ministre pleasure Gould. to take part um, in a conversation as with part of Minister Gould. We will also be inviting Nid, uh, Nidhu Jagoda, and please feel free to correct me if I mispronounce your name. Uh, Nidhu Jagoda, who is the NECO coordinator of the Sustainable Development um, Network Youth Canada. So, with that in mind, let's have them appear. Oh, look, they're there. Oh, they're there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, welcome, bonjour, bienvenue. Thanks. Great, can I jump in now? Absolutely. Okay, parfait. Bon, bonjour à tous. Ça, ça fait plaisir de être avec Hello, vous. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you again today. Thank you so much to all of you for joining us for this discussion. Um, I'm really excited to be here with uh, um, with Chuk and Nidu for what I think is going to be a really engaging conversation about the SDGs. Uh, a few weeks ago, we celebrated the one-year anniversary of Moving Forward Together, Canada's 2030 Agenda National Strategy. La stratégie nationale et notre engagement à habiliter toutes les personnes et organisations. The national strategy is our commitment to empowering all people and organizations who wish to who wish to act on the sustainable development goals it's about creating an enabling environment that supports innovative partnerships and widespread collaboration what better forum for this than the together Assam Confer conference where the whole of the society can come together to progress and mobilize resources for action and earlier to co-sign it in my role as minister of international development now, as the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development, I get to work with my federal colleagues, with my counterparts from other levels of government, and with organizations and individuals from coast to coast to coast to advance the domestic implementation of the 2030 Agenda. That's why I'm really delighted to be here today to lead Canada's domestic implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and to have this opportunity to engage with passionate individuals on how we can build a better future for all. And let me just take a moment to talk um, about what I think is exciting about the SDGs. Because until the SDGs, a lot of the kind of global development goals were focused on the developing world. But with the um, advent of the SDGs, it was not just about what we're doing outside of our own borders, but it's also what we're doing inside. And I think this is really important because in the time that I had as Minister of International Development, I would often think about some of the really innovative things that Canada is funding outside of our borders that we could actually learn from and fund inside of our borders. And we could actually have more of a two-way, uh, mutually beneficial relationship uh, between Canada and the outside world. And I think there's so much that we can learn from what's happening elsewhere and that we can also share uh, with our own successes. But I think this is something that's really exciting because what we're talking about today is addressing the SDGs here at home. So now I'm very happy uh, to be joined today by Nidu Jagoda and Chuk Odinibo. Uh, Nidu, you work behind the scenes here as National Network Coordinator for the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, the Canada Youth Chapter. And you are also currently a legal research group member at the Centre for International Sustainable Development Law. Quand à Chuk, nous avons le plaisir de vous connaître en tant qu'animateur de cette conférence et vous faites un travail incroyable. Mr. Chuk, we have a pleasure of knowing you as the MC for this conference. You're doing a great job. Uh, but beyond that, you have an impressive background. This Black-owned, youth-led professional services social enterprise that seeks to advance climate justice and equity co-founder of the Poison in the Apple, an Albertan nonprofit organization that seeks to make nature truly for all, and a PhD candidate at the University of Ottawa in medical geography. Um, I think everyone in the audience can agree that we have two very accomplished individuals um, on this call and or on this uh, conference, and I'm really excited to hearing from you. Uh, so seeing how you are two young individuals passionate about sustainable development, I'm first of all curious to hear what motivates you to be involved in this type of work. So Nidu, why don't we start with you? 
Thank you for that warm introduction. And honestly, what motivated me to get involved in this work, primarily um, my foundational education was in environmental science. And so I had a passion and love for nature, you know, climate change, all of that was from my first year. It was a big topic of conversation. But I noticed as I got further and further into my studies, there was a big disconnect between our understanding of science literacy and how that's applied in decision-making spaces. So for me, I really wanted to get involved with that, that I think that gap is probably a better word to use here. As much as we recognize the inter, uh, SDGs as an interdisciplinary or framework or, you know, a global or interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary set of goals, our approach sometimes can be very siloed. And that's, I think, what kickstarted my interest in even getting involved with this network and the many other things I do, just to try and tie those things together and be able to work with people who have visibility and understanding of different fields. And so that's kind of how I see at least my career progressing. And I'm honestly excited to hear Chup what you would have to say about that as well. Oui, um, en effet, c'est c'est quand même une très belle question. Yes, so, it's a very um, good question. Je dirais toujours que j'étais tellement motivé, j'étais j'étais amené dans ce espace-là par mes identités. C'est le fait que je suis un jeune homme noir, racisé, francophone, issu de milieu minoritaire, de minorité, etc. Tout ça là a comme vraiment fait en sorte que en sorte que moi, dans ma vie, quand j'étais très jeune, je sais pas pourquoi, mais j'avais toujours comme toutes ces crises existentielles, disant est-ce que je suis même vivant? Ever since I was a young man, Mais je me suis trouvé dans la nature et je trouvais que je me suis senti apaisé. Et pas juste apaisé, mais présent. When I was stressed, I went to nature. Que je trouve à me demander quand même bien mes sentiments. J'aime appuyer ma main sur le tronc d'un arbre devant lequel je passe. Non pour m'assurer de l'existence de l'arbre dont je ne veux pas, mais de la mienne. Et j'ai toujours trouvé que quand je suis dans la présence de la nature, j'ai trouvé que j'existe. Et je crois en grande partie que c'est parce que j'ai beaucoup appris de la nature, j'ai beaucoup appris des arbres, j'ai beaucoup appris des animaux, j'ai appris comment interagir avec d'autres personnes, j'ai appris comment trouver moi-même. Et ça fait en sorte que j'ai pu trouver une belle connexion avec la nature. Et donc ça, c'était mon entrée. A beautiful connection ah, pour, with nature. Pour sur les ODD, parce this is là, on the way la nature, I came into donné, working que tout, que tout with on the ASDGs because we realized that everything was connected. Good health, connected to nature, uh, solutions to decent jobs as well. Uh, this is tout ça est fortement connecté à la mentalité, à l'équité entre les gens, toutes ces choses-là. Uh, et j'ai trouvé ça vraiment, vraiment puissant. Puis je me suis dit, je I peux pas travailler sur une chose sans travailler sur And I thought, I can't uh, work on one thing without working on everything, on all those things. I do not have a choice in that regard. I really have to work on everything else to progress on the environment and create des sociétés qui sont respectées creating societies that are respectful of the environment. It is uh, important to create societies that are respectful to minorities and women, for example. So I have I, I am working because I recognize that everything is interconnected. So that's my motivation. That's great and interesting that both of you are interested in this work and got interested in this work because of nature, the environment, and the interconnectivity, interconnectedness between everything. Um, is the interconnectivity of them is that you really can't have one without the others. And that's what makes the SDG agenda so important and, and so interesting. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering uh, now uh, for each of you, what, what is your vision? for Agenda 2030. Uh, how do you see yourselves playing out in that? And, and what more should Canada be focused on when it comes to meeting those objectives? And so, uh, Chuk, let's start with you this time. I think whenever I think about the SDGs, I think about you know the ways in which sort of the United Nations tried to come up with something that can be taken by every nation across the world. And you know, there's a lot of nations and we adapted to the local circumstances. And so when I think about a Canadian context and the SDGs, I think 
one of my hopes is that we start linking more and more um, the, the truth and reconciliation calls to action to the SDGs. And that we ask organizations, not only what are you doing to support sustainable development, but what are you doing to support reconciliation? Because as was aptly mentioned, you know, as folk who live in what is currently Canada, we have to recognize that we are benefiting off of um, indigenous lands. And that could be whether through the natural resources, through the air quality, so simply just being physically here. And so that means that we have a duty to reconcile with indigenous folk, um, irregardless um, of what our history with this country is. So I think um, that's one of my big hopes for the 2030 agenda is that we are better about integrating reconciliation into our understanding of sustainable development and recognizing that we cannot achieve all of our SDG goals without also achieving all of our reconciliation goals. That was beautifully said, Chu. Um, if I could just even add on to that, I, in, in my respect, I would love to see this become more accessible as a framework um, to localize the actions and, and um, communities. So when we're talking about corporations or small businesses trying to take on these SDGs, there's now a blueprint that exists that they can go to and you know use as a benchmark or a framework or even as a guiding post. And for me, that's something that's really important, giving a, uh, a term, I think, to how to make these changes. For a long time, people would talk about the environment, they would talk about wellness, health, all of these things, but they didn't have um, a framework according to which we could, you know, institute that change in. And even though the SDGs, you know, are not perfect, they're still a work in progress, we still need to do a lot of work on them, they at least provide that accessibility, I think, to the average person that wasn't there before. And my hope for 2030 is that this framework will be widely used, not only across Canada, but it'll be localized to the contexts of specific areas, specific industries. I, I hope that people will feel comfortable in whatever agency they have to be able to go to their place of work, their place of community and be like, hey guys, these are things we can implement. These are you know, a set of frameworks, a set of goals, a target. Um, we can all sit together and talk about. And that's what I think one of the strengths of the SDGs is. It's bringing people to a table of conversation and decision-making where pre Previously, there was no, again, visibility or profile for a lot of these issues. Um, and, and now you can actually hold companies or um, businesses accountable, which is super great. Um, and in terms of what I would love to see Canada do, I would love to see Canada take a more, I think, leadership stance in the localized context in terms of actually providing pathways, opportunities, funding, mobilizing resources for especially marginalized communities, I feel, including youth, so the group that we fall into, but for them to actually bring about tangible change. I notice a lot of the times it's resources and mobilizing funding that is one of the biggest issues for small and grassroots initiatives. And so seeing that kind of um, support means a lot to different sorts of communities I've worked with, at least in the past. And that's what I hope to keep seeing um, as we get closer to this 2030 mark. And maybe if I could even jump in, because you brought up some phenomenal points, Nidu, is I think one of the things that we struggle with quite a bit in Canada is almost a sense of self-grandiosity. Right? We have this very, um, in my opinion, very bad habit of kind of looking to either our neighbors down south or looking at other countries and saying, oh, well, we are better off than them, so <laughs> we are good. And I think um, it speaks almost, and this is maybe coming from an overachiever kid, so this may not always apply, but it's kind of that idea of like, oh, I got a B in math and those other kids got like C's and B's, so like, I'm good, I don't need to do more. It's like, no, 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 we need to target that A+. plus. We need to be like, we need to like up our game and recognize that like, we are not perfect until there's not a single homeless person in, in this country, we cannot say that we've achieved the no poverty goal. Until sort of, until there's not a single uh, woman or person of sort of a minority gender, whether it's non-binary, agender, whatever it is, who is sitting there saying that I'm doing the same job as a man, and for some reason, <laughs> my paycheck is not up to par. We cannot say that we've achieved gender equity. 
And all of these are linked to the environment, right? If we have an environment we've heavily feminized, we talk about mother nature, we talk about women being life givers. How on God's earth can we, you know, have a positive relationship with nature if we're busy there sort of denigrating women, right? So it's, it, you know, all these things are interlinked and we need to recognize that like, A, we're not perfect, but then B, we should be pushing to constantly be better. We should constantly be aiming to be better. And so we need to change narratives that we tell ourselves that we're good enough and start telling ourselves we can do better. We have the resources to do better. We have the, the human capital to do better. And so the, the only reason we're not doing better, frankly, is laziness. I love what you just said. Everything about what you just said was amazing. So thank you for sharing that. I 100% I agree. We have the resources. We have the young talent. We have, you know, the bright future, the bright minds ready to work. Just we need to mobilize those opportunities. We need to bring it to them, give them power, agency, leadership. It took everything you just said was so phenomenal. I cannot agree more. And on that note, actually, I think this is a great point to segue into the question uh, from Minister Gold. We are curious to hear more on your point of view on how Canadian youth can be supported in their initiatives to achieve the SDGs and improve our country. But from your perspective and leading on the S2030 agenda in Canada, how do you see youth contributing to this 2030 agenda? Well, it's an excellent question. And um, first of all, let me just say it's really inspiring to hear from both uh, Yuchuk and uh, Nidu, because I think you demonstrate how much young people have to offer and bring to this conversation. Um, you know, I I always feel better after I talk to young people because I feel like they've kind of got it figured out, like they know what we need to do and, and how to get there. Um, and so I think that's why it's important that we ensure that there's there's not just space for youth voices, but that there's an actual commit to listening and bringing them in to part of that decision making. Um, you know, the Prime Minister likes to say, uh, young people are not the leaders of tomorrow, they're the leaders of today. And that's something that I wholeheartedly subscribe to, because when we're talking about Agenda 2030, I mean, we're eight years out. Um, and so it's actually really important for young people to be involved in building and developing that roadmap, because that's the future that you're building towards. That's the future that you are growing into and that you are going uh, to leave as a legacy for future generations. And I mean, one of the things you talked about at the beginning, Chuk, was um, your organization, right? I mean, their future ancestors. What are we doing to leave the world a better place? for those generations that are coming up behind us. And that's where I, you know, I think that um, youth voices, youth action, youth vision is so important because that's that's what we're building this for. Um, you know, we need to help people today and now, um, but we also want to be building that better society and that better future. Um, and I think that you know, this is where young people have such a strong voice. And, and I get to count myself as a young person for the next four months because I'm, I'm still under 35 until then. Um, so I, I'm going to count myself as, as, as youth um, until then. But it's, uh, it, is, it is really, really important because I think that um, society improves because young people know we can do better. And they um, hold those of us who are in power to account by demanding better and demanding change and demanding um, that we do more. And I think when it comes to Agenda 2030, um, this is where um, you know people of all ages, but particularly young people, can look and say, we don't actually have to do things the way we've always done it. Actually, here are ways that we can do it better. Uh, and it's incumbent upon us in leadership positions to listen to those voices and to think about ways that we can actually make those changes. Now, a few of the things that we are doing, um, as I mentioned at the outset, I mean, we, we provide um, you know, millions of dollars a year in support for uh, organizations across the country that uh, promote the SDGs. Uh, and that's something that's really important. But I think more for a, like this, where we talk about the SDGs in the Canadian context, because I think too often we think about it as something that has to happen outside of our borders and not necessarily at home. 
we live in an amazing country and we are blessed in so many ways. But I think, Chuk, as you mentioned, that doesn't mean that we can't strive to be better and we can't strive to make improvements where we know we need to, um, whether that comes to reconciliation, uh, which we have to continue to do better on and we have to continue to improve, whether that that uh, is focused on the environment and climate change, which is probably one of the defining challenges of our time and particularly for young people right now is going to define their future, you know, on fighting poverty, on fighting discrimination and racism, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, you know, we can and should and must do better. And we will do that when we listen to the voices of young people. So with that, um, you know, I, I know we are running out of time, but I have one final question for uh, Nidu and for Chuk. Um, what would you want as a takeaway message for the audience to be in terms of how you see youth contributing to the 2030 agenda? I guess I can just jump in first. Um, for what I really want, if there's any young person listening on how, you know, how do you make an impact? Where do you get started? I've been in that very position myself and I can, I, I know a lot of young people who start out that way of not knowing where to start in kind of this, this big field or this fight against, you know, uh, the climate change or building back better or with the SDGs. And one thing I do want to put out there is get involved in any capacity you can. Try to take small steps. Try to look at what's happening in your direct communities, whether it's school, work, volunteering. Just try and take space. And sometimes it's as small as, you know, putting an email out there. Sometimes it could be going and talking to a faculty member at your school. So it's really about looking at what around you you have personal agency over and sometimes it can be tiny and it's not a big thing but that's okay and that's how it gets started um and honestly from there on you connect with people you get to meet like-minded individuals and it grows into something much bigger and much better than yourself and that's a very gratifying part and i'm lucky enough that i get invited to panels like this so thank you again for having me but it's one of those things where it takes time to build and to any young person please don't feel um discouraged or despair at that you're on your way doing one small thing even listening in on these kind of calls it's a good start. And to any person who is not youth or, you know, passing that threshold now, I implore you, take the time to look around your organization on how you can make positions for youth or positions for any marginalized community members to have their voices heard because they're inherent parts of our society that are sometimes overlooked. And these are the parts we need to address the most. So give them seats at the table, make their voices heard, be their champions. And that's something I would just invite anyone in any capacity to do, even if it's, again, bringing it up with a supervisor or something. There's always something small we can all do to play a part in. And with that, I'll leave it to Chuk to take care. Uh, to give his thoughts. Oh, merci beaucoup, Nida. That is a hard. Um, ça c'est quelque chose difficile à suivre, mais this is a je veux, hard act je veux follow, appuyer ce que Nida vient de dire, mais like je veux to ajouter également. What Nidu said, but um, I would like to add to it as well. Je veux as que vous assumez a young person, right? Like, vous n'avez pas besoin d'agir comme quelqu'un d'autre. Il faut que vous sachiez qui vous êtes et agir like comme qui else. vous êtes. Donc, you si Vous, act uh, vous avez as you are. So if you have a background of being educated in some way or uh, are uh, extroverted or introverted, just make sure that you accept yourself completely. So I'll tell you a story. When I was young, I had an existential crisis and I went to nature. I found myself in nature. But when I became a teenager, uh, at some point, I stopped going out into nature uh, and going out at all. Why? Because I didn't see black people. 
outside of my nature. Et my house. en plus de ça, uh, I did not see anyone like me in nature. And, uh, uh, I didn't find uh, camping, uh, uh, dormir people sur le terrain, ça uh, uh, were interested in the same thing pas in, in de, nature. De comme uh, I wasn't interested in camping. I wasn't interested in wearing khaki green Quand j'ai fermé mes yeux, j'ai pensé à quelqu'un à quatre ans sauvage, donc quelqu'un qui sort souvent en plein air. Il y avait une image qui venait dans mon esprit, qui venait dans ma tête, et c'était à moi quand j'ai pensé à ça. Parce que je me suis dit que le plein air n'est pas pour moi. It didn't Mais dans mon troisième année à l'université, so I thought that going out qui était un peu avant pour me. Puis elle a dit, uh, pour ton exemple final, uh, soit uh, tu like changes le monde, I had a et tu me montres la preuve, et je vais corriger ça, je vais évaluer ça, tu vas avoir des notes par rapport à ça, ou soit tu fais une revue de la littérature et tu fais un résumé. Uh, so uh, moi, uh, j'étais juste là comme cool. Uh, uh, you take et à cette époque-là, or... uh, j'étais mannequin. So, j'ai demandé à un ami qui est photographe, et j'ai demandé à d'autres amis à mannequin à devenir un part avec moi, on se déshabillait, puis on utilisait comme les choses modernes, donc comme les livres, les ordinateurs, les cellulaires, toutes ces choses-là. Puis j'ai appelé la série des photographes Mon rêve we vert, made my dream photos, dream. Et je l'ai soumis à l'Organisation des Nations Unies parce que cette année-là, il y avait dream. comme une conférence uh, à Rio plus 20 qui uh, a été sur le développement de conférence in Brazil, ce que j'ai trouvé vraiment, vraiment cool what I found et que les Nations Unies really cool ont publié les photos the de moi et mes amis toutes nues. Uh, uh, sur le site me and my friends, friends, by the way, we're taking our clothes off j'ai parlé du fait que j'ai rêvé and, de, de me connecter and avec l'environnement et de retourner l'humanité à la connexion. This was a way of showing that I was dreaming of a new connection with the environment and being in harmony with nature in nature without leaving technology behind because in our photographs we also, although we were naked, we were using technology, we had technology like phones and other things in our pictures. And the message was that we were in nature, connected with nature, but with technology as well. De, so, des études scientifiques qui démontrent que ça c'était même nécessaire. So, moi j'ai porté ça. Et cette année-là, j'ai aussi été nommé um, top 25 environmentalist under 25. Et cette époque-là, ça m'a And, ça uh, beaucoup frappé. Parce que je me suis dit, oh, ma voix est importante. Et ma manière de connecter avec And, la nature, uh, ça résonne avec la connexion. Et ma vision du monde, ça résonne avec la connexion. Et ma vision du monde, ça résonne avec la connexion. Donc, il faut que je trouve cet espace-là. Donc, tout ça peut dire que mon rencontre est dans le monde que je n'ai pas en train d'écouter. Vraiment comme... To all Soyez the young people who are listening, right? you can't be anybody else but be, yourself. Be yourself. And assume yourself be, completely because if you and need something and if you have certain if, needs, if you have certain visions, and if there's some way that you connect with the environment or connect with any of the other SDG goals, c'est sûr et certain that there are other people who need that message as well. And so occupy that space fully and completely. Be yourself. Um, oh my goodness. C'est la fin de notre... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not when you're part of it, j'ai beaucoup trop parlé. Um, before we transition, do we have any last words from Minister Gould, um, Nidu? Any last things to say? I'll just say really quickly um, thank you both for sharing your stories. Uh, merci à vous deux, c'est vraiment inspirant. Et uh, je crois uh, que tout le monde qui est. It's qui a, a true inspiration, and I believe that everyone who listened had also the same reaction can make a difference uh, and you need to take up that space and whether it's small um, you know and whether it's at the very local level or whether it's at the provincial territorial uh, federal or even international level you never know where it's going to take you um, and so I think I think the message is you know if you're passionate about making a difference take that step um, and do it you know one of my favorite quotes um that I always turn to is uh, one by Pierre Trudeau, who says, you know, countries weren't built like uh, the pyramids in Egypt to be there and not change. You know, they're built day by day by citizens who, you know, are are changing and, and growing. And I'm paraphrasing this quote, but, you know, it's, it's basically saying that, that every citizen in this country, 
you know, has a role to play in building the country that we're going to be. Um, and so I think the two of you have demonstrated how you're doing that every single day and have certainly um, served as an inspiration for, for everyone watching. So, so thank you so much to both of you. Et merci beaucoup pour, pour vos histoires tellement personnelles. Et ce que thank you, thank you for your pers personal stories. Wonderful. Merci beaucoup, Minister Gould. Thank you, thank you. you. Minister Gold. Thank you. No, you I do. just want to say thank you again for having me. I loved hearing Chirk you talk. And Minister Gold, thank you for your amazing remarks and commentary. Um, this was a great session, so I enjoyed being here. Amazing. Thank you both so much. And so with that, we're going to show you off screen. So hua hua. Uh, woo, look at that AV team on point did you all see just how smooth that was um, 